Good to go. Truth or happiness? Never both. So says Cal Lightman, the character that was played by Tim Roth on the TV show Lie to Me. That seems like a pretty drastic choice, especially since we're brought up as little kids to always tell the truth. And everybody likes happiness, right? But are those really our only options? There are definitely benefits to being honest. As Mark Twain said, if you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. <laughs> People find us more credible when we're honest, so they're more likely to believe those of us who have been honest in the past. And I think most of us agree that a generally truthful world is a good thing. Lying reduces trust among people. It's also an established belief of most religions and moral codes that lying is not okay. The idea is that some things are just fundamentally bad, and lying is one of them. Some philosophers like Kant go so far as to say there's never any justification for lying. So if honesty is so good, then why do people still lie? Research has found that on average, we lie two times a day with others finding that we lie three times during a 10-minute conversation. <laughs> Even if we go with the lower number, there's a lot of lying going on. But we don't think of all lies as the same. For example, we tell white lies to make someone else feel better or prevent hurting their feelings. How many of us has had kids bring home art and we tell them, why, yes, honey, that looks exactly like me. <laughs> Although, sadly, that one's actually kind of accurate. Or who has said to a loved one, no, dear, that outfit doesn't make your butt look big. <laughs> White lies serve as a kind of social sandpaper to smooth out our interactions with other people. <laughs> the kind of lies we think of as black lies are usually lies of commission, where someone deliberately says something untrue to deceive someone else, usually to protect the liar. Lies of omission are when we tell the true parts, but leave out the incriminating bits. Sometimes saying nothing is still a lie. However, we don't just lie to other people. We also all engage in self-deception, often not knowing that we're lying to ourselves. <laughs> we're so focused on managing what others think of us that we can't separate truth from fiction in our own minds. We're not trying to impress other people, but trying to keep our view of ourselves consistent with the way they want us to be. So if lying is such a big deal, how hard is it to tell if someone is lying? Well, it turns out that detecting lies is hard. There's no Pinocchio effect like Pinocchio's growing nose that happens only when we lie. And humans are not particularly good at judging on their own whether or not someone is lying, being right only around 54% of the time, not, not much better than tossing a coin. Since we're not so good on our own, we've tried to find other methods. The polygraph is what most of us think of as a lie detector, using blood pressure, breathing, and skin conductance to tell if someone is aroused. The idea is that someone guilty would be more aroused to questions about the crime than other issues. It's good on things like did you steal the money, but not so much on other things. In the past 20 years, people have looked at other ways of detecting deception. My research uses changes in eye movements, blink rate, and pupil diameter to tell if someone is lying. Lying involves both thinking hard, like when trying to keep your story straight, as well as arousal from fear of being detected. Your pupil gets bigger in both cases, so it can serve as a sign of deception. Micro-expressions are facial expressions that last only a fraction of a second and happen when we're trying to hide a feeling, either on purpose or unconsciously. If your facial expression doesn't match what you're saying, it's possible you're not telling the truth. Still, all these suffer from the fact that there's no Pinocchio's nose, so any one method alone won't cut it. <laughs> so while it's clear that any one grimace or big pupil alone is never gonna be 100% accurate, hopefully the results of multiple measures will do better. Humans are not alone in this lying business. Deception is common among other animals and even some plants. Predators looking for food need to sneak up on their meals and prey want to avoid being seen for as long as possible. So camouflage helps. Misleading others increases the success of the species. And humans aren't beyond some of these tactics either. If you hadn't realized it, fly fishing is really just one big lie. <laughs> You're trying to convince a fish that your fly is something it's not. I imagine thousands of jaded cotton release trout thinking, you knew all along that bug wasn't real. <laughs> Lying is deeply embedded in our subconscious because of evolution. Living things that didn't have the knack to deceive died of starvation or were eaten and didn't reproduce. Those who could lie had a better chance of multiplying. 
While many animals use deception, only people are wired to deceive both themselves and others. So if we're wired in a way that sees lying as a survival tactic, when is it okay to lie? We seem to agree that lying for self-serving reasons is not a good thing. But given that we're social animals that live in groups, sometimes telling people untrue things so we can all get along would be a big benefit. Can we ever really justify hiding the truth? Seems that a lot of us are fine with some lies. Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, Tooth Fairy become institutionally sanctioned and accepted. Ever seen happiness there? Technically, we're telling our kids a lie, although judging by the look on my younger daughter's face, I'm not sure she's buying any of the bunny business. <laughs> what about lying about something more serious? What if the lie serves to protect someone else? He went that away. Should Meep Geese, who had Anne Frank and her family, have told the truth? Well, since you asked, as a matter of fact, Mr. Nazi, there are Jews living upstairs. While these kinds of situations don't happen every day, is it ever justified to tell a lie if it's meant to keep someone else safe and there's no other way to make it happen? Outside a senior center in Germany, a bench and a fake bus, sign, a bus stop sign serve as a honey trap to attract patients with dementia who sometimes wander off trying to find their way home. Instead of venturing blindly into the city and causing a police search, they see the sign and wait for a bus that will never come. After a while, they forget why they're there and someone invites them back inside. Is this really wrong? So, what's it going to be? Truth or happiness? Can we ever have both? Lying isn't solely the product of evolution. It's also the product of choice. It's up to you to decide whether or not you want to use that choice. But then again, I just want you to be happy. So why should you believe anything that I tell you? Thanks. Thanks, Frank.